Hello, hi there. I'm so delighted to welcome you here in my session today because we're going to speak about something so, so exciting and I'm sure very useful for you. We're going to speak about moving from local to international markets, how we're going to do that, why it's important and why and how to actually utilize both of the markets. Let me just jump with a short introduction about myself and then we can dive deep into the topic. So let me just move my head here. My name is Stan Slavev and I have close to 10 years of experience in the field of creative, uh, of creative content and entrepreneurship. I have over 500 projects done currently with international clients and this is just on top of my head and I'm sure there are more of those. Uh, in, in addition to that, I have built from the startup to the uh, foundation and then scaling uh, four companies in the field, again, in marketing design and some actually a startups as well. Outside of my professional work, uh, work, I really love helping people and I do that by helping, for example, freelancers like you guys and other uh, young entrepreneurs on their road to success. Currently trying to share my, uh, my experiences through channels like YouTube, personal brands and other ways so that my advice, my experience can reach to more people and now I'm here to share it with you. So let's get started with what actually we're going to be covering in this presentation. Let me just move my head here. I'll be moving around so don't bother, I'll try to be flexible as usual. So what are we covering in this session? We're going to start with the difference between local and global markets. What is in there, why it is important and what we should consider. Okay, and then we're going to move with something so nice, actually creating our international presentation. Why we need to do that? How to create it? What to create, what to do while creating it actually? And many more interesting things. And then we're going to close off with the benefits of working locally with international markets and actually how to utilize this into our advantage. So let's get started with the first slide here. So before jumping into the differences, okay, let's see what is the common thing between working locally and internationally. Okay, so what is that thing? Do you have anything in mind that is actually the same when working locally and globally? Well, that's you, <laughs> okay? That's you that is the same thing. You're the common thing. And of course, you're not a stone. You're not something permanent. We're constantly changing, constantly developing. So what we're going to discuss now is what we need to adjust in ourselves, in our mindset, in our vision, in order to move forward into grabbing those international markets, okay? So let's start with some of the differences, of the main differences that we have be between working locally and working globally, okay? So, first of all, we are solving global needs, meaning the needs and the problems that we're solving are different. They're on a different scale and those needs to be adjusted into our mindset. Then, another big important part, we are competing globally. So we, when, when we enter a global market, we enter the global market where there are global clients, but where there are also global service providers which we're competing with. And last but not least, the problems and also solutions are now global as well. Meaning if we have a problem which is with our international clients, maybe the solution is also found somewhere there. Okay, moving forward with a bit more specifics of actual key differences, key differences of, uh, of the two markets. Okay, so scale, scale, everything uh, working internationally is on scale. What do you do? How do you do it? Sometimes how often you do it and more importantly, the impact it has and the people it reaches. This is a main and substantial difference in the both markets, okay? And just to mention something here, the four of those points, actually they're interconnected to each other and we're going to see how in a bit. Then, the second key difference, problems, 
it often happens that you will be solving problems that you didn't have to solve before and therefore you need to find different solutions in order to solve them now and the larger the scale the larger the problems are and sometimes the different scale requires different solutions for something that you could actually solve before with the things you had already in mind then we have different approach and what i mean by different approach so the approach actually is from both sides meaning from our side as let's say freelancers who want to work with the client so this is one way approach and then the, there is the other approach which is from the client side to their own customers okay so this approach is also different when we speak about international markets it's different based on the market also and its scale as, as we spoke about scale a global company for example will be utilizing global trends okay global uh, uh, global features that will benefit and make it sustainable therefore we need to break down this communication globally to in order to serve our uh, our own self to serve our clients better if this makes sense of course and audience this is again one very very key difference what is the audience this is the the people that we are doing our work for this is the end user that will uh, be impacted from this and here again the audience is uh, differentiated by scale but also by for example how it reacts some some audiences might be louder that you see out there some uh, uh, audiences Mm, require just different ways of um, of communication in order to 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 actually speak to them of course and all of this we need to um, to be aware how we are going to get this information and later in the presentation I'm going to speak about this as well okay so now that we have discussed some of the biggest differences and key differences let me discuss actually the success factors that are needed for us to be successful in the level of, uh, of working with international clients. Speed, clarity, quality and confidence. Okay, let's start with speed. Speed is a crucial one, a driving metric for pretty much every business. And you're entering a highway when you're going with international markets. You're entering a road so fastly driven that you need to be on a high speed, okay? So this is, this is very, very important. And just to have this in mind, that any kind of slow communication, any kind of de uh, lack or uh, delivery of uh, successful end, end results, any lack of proactiveness we almost guarantee you a at least not a sustainable workload with your clients and speed is crucial into that aspect then clarity what is clarity clarity means that in the simplest way in the most direct way people can understand what you can do for them and they can uh, of course envision themselves by your words so as you're competing in this whole world, your message needs to remain clear and easy to understand. There is a lot of noise that your clients are receiving on a daily base. Okay? And for them to listen to you, it's very important the message to be clean and simple so that they can understand you very well and also react into an uh, appropriate manner. Next part, quality. And this is not something uh, that is unique for just working with international clients. I don't need to tell you that you need to have a, higher, a high quality service in order to, to make your clients happy. Of course, we do that with all our clients, but still it's an important part and it's part of our success. And let me, let me tell you why, okay? In this high speed level that we are uh, entering, okay? there are a couple of differentiating factors that are differentiating us speed is one of them clarity is one of them but if you want to really stand out you need to show quality work and quality work also shows professionalism shows your desire to do good okay because in the ocean of mediocre service providers you're just gonna be lost if you don't provide quality service you're just gonna be one of the many 
players, many, many players out there that are doing the same thing and you don't want that. And then confidence. Well, confidence comes as a combination from many different things. One of them is actually the time for you to spend to do projects, okay? Your experience. But why confidence is important for uh, working with international clients and actually expanding our reach? Well, the simple thing is that when you want to say a message, to portray a message to your clients, it's much more likely that they will accept it as such if you say it in a confident way. Just think about it. If you want to do something for your client and you know it's good, but you don't show it with your words, it doesn't sound like this, why they should believe it? Like, there is no reason for them to believe that you're going to do what you said you're going to do if you don't say it confidently. Your confidence makes your clients relaxed and actually wanting to work with you because of that. Because you know how to solve their problems, okay? So those are really, really key factors of our success formula for going into international markets. So now, how we are starting? Where do we start? Uh, what we need to do to make actually something uh, reasonable in order to move and find clients, how to approach them and so on. Okay, so I have listed a couple of things here that I'm going to go through and discuss with you guys. So find the top players in your industry. Why are we doing this? Because what happens is locally we have some big brands, some of them actually international, which have international reach as well, but some local. And our reach and acceptance of the world is local. So moving globally, we need to understand which actually are the top players who are pulling the strings, okay, who are guiding the way. And we need to do that in the both ways of the service providers, meaning freelancers, agencies, solopreneurs like us, and also clients. So for example, let's say you're a copywriter. Find out some of the best agencies, some of the best freelancers that are doing copyright, and also find clients which can uh, benefit your service tremendously, or type of service, of course. Not, it might not be specific, uh, but, but in general one. So how they bring value to the customers is something that you're going to see in this research. Because this is a, also a different part in the delivery of service when we speak about international markets, like how they're actually delivering the value, how they are communicating it, okay, especially for clients, like how they communicate their brand values and products and services with their audiences. And more importantly, those are some like key aspects really in their communication. And you need to define which one are those in both, again, agencies, freelancers and client sites, because we want to know what's happening on both sides, you know, and then you actually, this is an advice that I give to so many people and it's, you don't know how much value you find when you go in the comments of different brands or even agencies, but brands especially, you go and find their comments in their Facebook, in their YouTube, like what people like, okay? And they're going to show it. They're going to show that they like it. And they're going to show that uh, if they don't like it as well. And they're going to give advice. They're going to say, oh, why, why my order was late? Or I love that my order came so, uh, so fast, you know? So, we need to embrace those types of communication and see uh, and understand the wider audience because the audience is different, as we spoke before. It has different problems, it has different solutions, it might be louder and all of those things. So what problems are the client solving or trying to solve? Like if you pinpoint these exact questions, then you can reverse engineer also your type of service and type of messaging. So what problems are those clients actually solving? Okay, so moving forward, starting with the research, what's next? What's next? Let's get practical. We gotta, oh, let me just hide myself be, behind this kitty. So we gotta hunt, hunt our vision. We gotta hunt the clients that we would like to, to work with, okay? And let me give you a simple exercise for you guys here. I want you 
to find five to ten clients that you would love to work with, that you would love to do work for them. And those brands might be bigger than what you're usually used to work, and that's okay. That's not a problem. Find those five to ten clients and then start thinking, how can I solve some of their problems at a scale? Because what happens is when we are usually providing case service, we, we do one-on-one -on -one coaches, we do one-on-one -on -one, you know, projects, simple projects, but when we speak about international clients, one of their common things is that some of the problems are on a scale. So we need to ask ourselves this. How are we going to solve their problems on a scale of those clients that we found that we would love to work with? Okay. And then having this in mind, we need to manufacture our, our communication to clients to build a custom uh, and a solution-based communication for their needs. Because look, uh, businesses currently, in nowadays, they want to listen. They want to listen specifics. They don't want to listen just any kind of words. They really need you to be specific in order to, uh, for them to understand how you can help their business. Good. So creating our print international presentation. This is, this is very important, of course. A main thing here, everything that you show off locally, it needs to move digitally. Everything that you show off locally needs to move digitally. And this we speak about, again, speed, about professionalism and everything else. So if you have any kind of ready to go PDFs, okay, we, you need to prepare those. You need to have them at your disposal very quickly, actually. If you have any kind of online portfolios, project templates even, if you have written down your processes, all of those is valuable, shareable information that your clients can uh, get use of it, actually. Then, if you have even just your company details written, this is important for your speed of work with international clients. You want things to happen fast, you want things to happen uh, now, basically. Then any kind of invoices, payment system, all this needs to be clear from your side. It needs to, uh, when a client asks you, you need to give them immediately an answer what needs to happen. And then yourself. And now we are going to speak about actually presenting yourself and how you can do that. So I'm going to discuss a couple of uh, general ways that you can present yourself. We can go in, uh, in details of those, but starting with LinkedIn. This is the professional network, okay? 100% your LinkedIn profile needs to be updated. There are so many now ways and you can add even services there and much, much more other things. I even saw, I saw a video story that could be added. That was really cool. Social media, like a lot of people speak about personal brands, but important thing here is have enough social media presence that when somebody lands there, that they can understand your level, that they can understand your industry and that they can see your real, okay? Rich and accessible portfolios. As I've said at the top of the slide here, mobile first, guys, this is so important. You need to be able to share any valuable information that you have on your place with your client through your mobile devices easily. Make that happen add links, add in Trello, whatever you like, okay? Shareable services. Again, if a client asks you, hey, what are you doing? Don't start just giving them a list of services that you can uh, do, but rather share them after the call something immediately and then take it from there. Even a personal website, have in mind that even not the greatest personal website can still be a better one than not having one. And now you have even a lot of free options to start in there. And then what a better thing to be an, actually an active member of your industry, to speak about the problems, to share them, and actually a lot of uh, recommendations and a lot of meetings happens from this, just being out there, uh, participating in different pod, uh, podcasts, articles, and so on. Okay, and almost closing off here, the benefits of serving global markets, but locally. Well, the biggest thing is we have different and new challenges and new challenges, they build us, they make us better, they make us stronger. Then the other thing is we're staying home and in the uncertain times currently that we have, staying home is a privilege that some of you, I'm sure, are going to really, really like with that. The other thing is we are helping our society, we're helping the people that are around us because we're bringing uh, 
we're bringing value to the uh, market of our country. And more importantly, we're bringing fresh capital to our country. And for example, for places uh, uh, like my country, Bulgaria, bringing fresh capital in the country and then spend, uh, spending it here, it's really, really a great practice. Because it, let's be real, it's one thing to just rotate money around and between ourselves, but it's another thing if we bring fresh capital and then we can utilize it here. Then why not utilizing local uh, labor because when you start your business even a freelance business you're going to need a website you're going to need a branding expert maybe a lawyer even so all of those are out there and of course working internationally will is going to bring you reputation and even actually financial benefits this is maybe one of the reasons that you're considering doing that and this is not a small one so definitely it's out there and then one again travel opportunities this is one great one because at the end of the day we're building relationship with our clients and what happens is we become their friends their close ones we do real change for themselves in their own life so it might happen that you just visit a friend of yours a client of yours and you know have a nice nice trip out there so this was the presentation that i had for you guys i hope you enjoyed it that you took some notes for you that there are some things that you can implement and try and please if you would like to connect with me i would love to if you have any questions for freelancing for growing your business for discussing it with clients i'll be more than happy to help it was pleasure speaking with you guys have a great day and enjoy your event bye bye